Hello, wrestling fans. Welcome to SICW All-Star Wrestling. I'm Drew Abenhouse here with Lucky P. Larson Esquire, who... Who, by the end of this episode, will manage the three-time, three-time, three-time SICW Tag Team Champions, the greatest tag team on God's green earth, the L.A. Hustlers. That very well may be the case, ladies and gentlemen, because your TV main event will be for the SICW Tag Team titles as the Top Guns will put the titles on the line. The L.A. Hustlers have invoked their rematch clause due to help from a pesky lawyer of some kind. Greatest lawyer in the world. But... We'll see, ladies and gentlemen, will we have new tag champs by the yes. time this episode is over? We yes. shall see. Also, in action today, of P Devastation Incorporated, Peyton Ayers is here. Belleville's own Bobby D will be in action. Also, we saw him uh, last week do an interview. He is back in action this week. Is Jason Breed will be in ring action. Who so cares? I care and the fans care. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your opening contest. Let's head straight to the ring. Wrestling fans, our opening contest set for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first, from Kansas City, Missouri, weighing in at 234 pounds, Rex Amadeus. <laughs> and his opponent accompanied to the ring by the merchant of violence, Stephen E. Representing Devastation Incorporated from Cairo, Egypt, 325 pounds, Peyton Ayers. The bell has sounded, ladies and gentlemen. Your referee, Andy Anderson, calls for your bell in our opening contest. Yes, that's why it's already sounded, you moron. Thank you, Lucky. Glad you're here. Yes. Peyton Ayers taking on Rex Amadeus. Amadeus Rex giving Amadeus. up about 100 pounds to the big I was man. just going to ask you at the weight advantage. You I know see, me well. I saw it coming. You did. You know, I hear this oh. uh, Amadeus guy has some skibility. Did you know that? It was a bill and skillity. Oh. Not skill and ability. It's oh. a bill and a bill skillity. And skillity. It's a different kind of skill and ability. Oh, all right. Just check it. That's when you come from Kansas City. That's gotcha. how it develops that way. All right. Is that anything like Skittles? It might be. Oh, there you man. go. Cave in the man's chest. Just measuring his shot. Well, you know, this is very likely your next SICW Classic Heavyweight Champion well, since he did single-handedly beat the Big Texan. He did not single-handedly beat the Big Texan, but he did score a pinfall victory over the Classic Champion. There were extenuating circumstances around that, but he did get the pinfall. Oh, That's what's going to go down in the record books. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. The man beat the Big Texan one, two, three. So... I can announce the championship committee has worked it out. Ladies and gentlemen, we return to Belleville, Illinois on April the 6th. Peyton Ayers will receive another shot at the Texan for the Classic Wrestling Championship. Good, he deserves it. He's received a few title shots recently, has not beaten the big Texan, but every he single now. time he learns a lesson. He picks up a flaw in the big Texan. He's he studying, this time. and every single time, last time we saw him put a bullseye on the arm and the shoulder of the big Texan, essentially eliminating the lariat from the Texan's arsenal. Yeah, and the big goof had no opportunity to do anything except tag, except hit his own tag team partner. Things happen. It was an accident. Bull Bronson should know that. Yeah, right. It was four big men throwing fists. Sometimes stuff happens. Uh-huh. That's always your excuse. Oh, man. Look at that. Amadeus. Something just happened there. Just crumpling yeah, to I, the mat. I think Amadeus is decomposing. I'll be here all week. Peyton Ayers got the front face lock. I think he was trying to bring Rex up to his feet. But if he's almost out, that's just dead body weight. So instead, choosing to just maybe uh, stick with his face lock hold. If he's where, smart, take, give up now. Take the energy out of Amadeus, make him burn up that oxygen, trying to get up and escape. Just give up now. Fight another day against somebody you have a chance against. Again, Re Rex Amadeus, a newcomer here in SICW, giving up is not something that will get you brought back. Rex no, but it might here. save your life. Yeah, yeah. 
Peyton Ayers Good just night. catching on the dais and slamming Down to 100. Him. Is that going to do it? Yes, it is. Of course it is. Well, you hate to say it because I don't. of what we've seen them up to in recent weeks. Fireballs still burying people in flags. Yep. But you cannot deny they are impressive as ever. Of course Specifically not. Peyton Ayers. Yep. As he approaches his classic championship oh, wait, wait, match. Here comes freedom of speech. Here comes freedom of speech. You can stick your freedom of speech right up your freedom of, uh, anyway. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Peyton Ayers, led by Stephen E., keeping his momentum going, rolling in to his championship match April the 6th in Belleville, Illinois. Peyton Ayers with a big win. And I hope he beats the big goof. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now I'm going to toss it to my colleague, Miss Destiny Lynch, who is here with Bobby D. Who cares? SICW this evening, I'm here with your two-time Bruiser Brody Memorial Cup Battle Royale champion, Bobby D. Bobby D, how are you feeling after your recent loss? Well, let's just uh, step aside from that for a second. It's soon to be only three time when I defend this at FanFest 2. Yeah. So, we all know what kind of dastardly individual Steve Fender is. I give him a title shot, and he uses Sean Vincent to win, bashes my knee in with a chair, and he uses him to get that title from me. Get my rematch. I got him on the ropes. What's he do? Pulls a chain out and knocks me out. Now that he's the AIWF national champion, I think I need to take that title and the Central t States title off of him to uh, take him down a notch or two. What do you guys think? So we're going to take him down a notch. And Sean Vincent, don't think I forgot about you. I got something real good in store for you. And tonight, when I take on Richard Shaw in this ring later on tonight, you'll see exactly what I'm capable of. Strong words from Bobby D. Now we're going to go to the ring for our next match. Ladies and gentlemen, this matchup set for one fall. Introducing first from the Far East at 213 pounds, he is the Shogun. His opponent makes his way to us from Dallas, Texas. Weighing in at 232 pounds, he is the Don Father, Lou Gotti. The bell is rung, ladies and gentlemen. What a treat. We are being blessed by, unfortunately, who is now the former yeah. AIWF national champion. I was going to say, he the, looks a little lighter than the last time we saw him. The Don Father, Lou Gotti, making his way from Dallas, Texas, to East Carondelet, Illinois, showing off his skills here against the Shogun. But you know what he's not showing off? The national championship. That's exactly right. Now, that was an excellent matchup, ladies and gentlemen. You saw bits and pieces of it. Superstar Steve Fender challenging the then champion Lou Gotti for the AIWF National Championship. And it Beating was back and forth. One, two, it three. was a great match. I think there was indeed a handful of tights on behalf of the superstar Steve Fender. Yeah, I didn't see but that. But guess what? Whether you saw it or not, it doesn't matter. That's the right. referee counted one, two, three. It That's counts. That's right. You're so, exactly unfortunately, right the first time we're seeing Lou Gotti here in action on All-Star Wrestling in the studio, he doesn't have the title that we know him for. Isn't that a shame? But we've already been in touch. Matt Classic, shout out to the AIWF Championship Committee. I know they're uh -oh. already... Uh-oh. Oh, nicely done. What a backbreaker. Is that it? Lou Gotti, wow. super impressive. The Don nope. Father getting a nice win on All-Star Wrestling, showing exactly uh, why he will be at the top of the ladder to get a shot against superstar Steve Fender to potentially reclaim his AIWF national title. Well, I will say this. I, I call it like it is. That was an impressive outing. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. The Don Father, Lou Gotti, picking up a big win on All-Star Wrestling. Did he even break a sweat? Folks, we've got to take a commercial break. When we return, it is this week's Promoter's Corner, right after this.
Get ready for Melee on the Midway. SICW, we're wrestling at the chase. Meet the race. Wrestling, racing, and music. Saturday, June 1st, Worldwide Technology Raceway. For ticket information, go to SICW.org. Melee on the Midway. Featuring WWE legend, Cowboy Bob Orton Jr., Attila Khan, Night Trade Gary Jackson, and more. Saturday, June 1st, where wrestling, racing, and music come together. Lay on the midway. Followed by actor singer Ludacris in concert. Be there. Wrestling fans, there's nothing better than barbecue and wrestling. When you're hungry, stop by Mr. Barbecue with two locations to serve you in Columbia and Waterloo, Illinois. Great barbecue, cold beverages, and SICW wrestling. Can you see me? Can you see me? It doesn't matter if they can see you. Get out of here. Get, get, wait a minute. Get, can, you, can you see me now? You can't, you, you know, you can't see me. Now you can see me. Thank you, sir. Hello, everyone. This is Bill Apter down here in Apter's Alley. 2015 inductee into the St. Louis Hall of Fame. Thank you to everyone who inducted me, Herb Simmons and the rest of the crew. SICW, sensational, incredible championship wrestling. Also stands for Southern Illinois Championship Wrestling. And all roads on May 17th, 2024, and May 18th, 2024, are headed to the big city of the Big Dome. And this is Fan Fest number two. I couldn't be at number one, but I'm going to be there for sure. And on the 17th, on that night, I'm doing my one-man show. Now, what's the one-man show all about? Is it going to be these... Um, like heavy Q&As, talking about the business. and that. No. No, this is like a, a variety show. There'll be trivia, there'll be music, there'll be contests. You've never had so much fun in your entire pro wrestling life. I can assure you of that. Then, on Saturday, all day long will be this incredible fan fest. You'll be meeting some of the legends of the pro wrestling world, dozens and dozens of legends of the pro wrestling world. Saturday night, there'll be an incredible wrestling show, so it's a weekend that you must be at, especially for my show on the night of the 17th. It's Friday night, so come on, out, out and party. Um, SICW.org for full information. I can't wait to see your face in the place. And uh, this is Bill Apter, St. Louis Wrestling Hall of Famer, if you will. I'll see you in St. Louis, Louis, and you, you too, Barbara and Pam and Darla and Herb and uh, Mike and Ed and Frankie and Alan and All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from a break and it is time for this week's Promoter's Corner. Let's go now. fans <laughs> to SICW All-Star Wrestling. And right now you're watching a match that was took place back in February. Tonight, you're gonna see in a main event on TV here, 
uh, between these two teams. But this is a match back in February when the LA Hustlers were defending their title against the popular Top Guns. And right here at the Bel Claire Fairgrounds, you see this is towards the end of the match. And these teams, both of them, just tore the place down. As you can see, there was powder that the LA Hustlers started this match off with. And uh, of course, their shady manager, uh, Lucky P. Larson Esquire, was at ringside. But you can see the action was outside the ring. And there, Brandon Barreto working on the LA Hustler. Great crowd at the Bel Claire Fairgrounds once again. And this action, this was for the SICW tag titles. The LA Hustlers defending them against a popular team of. Joey Vanetti and Brandon Beretta. Great camera work, camera work being right there. As you can see, SICW trying to uh, improve a little bit on bringing you the up and close personal action with our floor camera, thanks to uh, the camera crew, Nate and his staff. Good, good crowd shots, good action shots outside. The referee kind of lost control of this at the beginning. As you can see, all four men outside. What's he going to do? It looks like he's going to power drive him on that concrete floor. But no, he backflips him. Great action right there. Great camera work. Joey Vernetti says, here, let me help you back into the ring. Nope, nope. Before I do that, I'm going to introduce you to my fist a little bit more. Now he tosses him in the ring. Fans, you're watching the best in professional wrestling each and every Sunday night. And of course, as I said, this was action that took place the last February at the Bel Claire Fairgrounds in Brandon Beretta. Vicious shops. Now, takes him over to the corner where Joey Bernetti is. Tag is made. That's what makes this team so popular, the Top Guns. Great work. Great teamwork, both of these teams. Ooh, a two count by referee Bill Henson. There you see in the lower right-hand corner was Lucky P. Larson Esquire. Yep, yeah. whenever he's at ringside, you know there's always trouble. Whips him off, big clothesline by Joey Vernetti. Fans, don't forget, wrestling returns to the Belclair Fairgrounds on Saturday night, April the 6th, with another all-star card being lined up. Great teamwork once again by the Top Guns. The one thing about the LA Hustlers, wherever they are, they have controversial surrounding them. They're a tough team, there's no doubt about it. But they will break the rules to get that win. And vicious chop by Brandon. Ernetti. Punching, kicking. He said, oh, you want to fight? We'll show you that. A little double team in there, but now. Oh, uh, elbow delivered by Joe Vernetti. Double teamwork once again. That's what I said. The Top Guns showing that they are graduates of the Ace Wrestling Academy. Cowboy Bob Wharton Jr. They graduated from his academy, and it really has paid off for him. They have traveled all over. They've been to Memphis. They've been to Tennessee. But right here, they're at the Bell Claire Fairgrounds in Belleville, Illinois. Fernetti going up for this finishing move. But <laughs> the L.A. Hustler says, whoa, wait a minute. We've been there. We've been on the receiving end of that. L.A. Hustlers have everything to lose in this match as they came in as the tag team champions. And of course, the Top Guns, they want them. They want to leave here. There you see Lucky P with that dented up briefcase. Some says he's got it loaded with bricks. He likes to tell people he's got it loaded with money. I've never seen that. Once again, action outside the ring. Lamont Diggs. Ooh, wraps that leg of Vernetti around that corner post now working on the leg of Vernetti great crowd shots as you can see a capacity crowd at the Belclair Fairgrounds 
there's our good friend Sally, one of our favorites here, and Dolores, always oh, front row seats. Ooh, big kick on Vernetti, big punch on Beretta. And this was the time the crowd thought that the LA Hustlers were going to retain those titles. They isolated Vernetti in that corner and Beretta outside. And you could just feel the crowd, the anticipation, oh no, they're going to walk out of here still as the champions because they are really double teaming Joey Vanetti. And the lucky P walking around like a champion, of man, a manager of the champions. Referee Bill Henson really had his hands full in this one. There you see Lucky P. Larson. What he does best. Always interfering. Bill Henson telling him, let the man go. Ooh, he scoops him up. Just walks around the ring and now deposits him down hard. Big body slam. And he says, that's it. He moves in for the cover. But no. Brandon says, ah, two can play that game. He comes in and breaks it up. But now look at it. Just a blatant choke on Vernetti. One of our fans there in the front. Telling the referee, get him out of there. Freddy now punches through the midsection, but L.A. Hustlers doing it again. Just when you think they're being knocked down a step or two, they manage to get it back up now, trying to keep Brandon Beretta occupied as they continue to work on Joe Vernetti. But now all four men inside the ring. Oh, there you go. That's just what I'm talking about. Oh, a big choke slam delivered. And now it's Brandon Beretta and the Top Guns. Brandon rolls outside the ring. I'm not, this time, I'm not sure who the legal man was. I don't know if it's Vernetti, if it was Brandon Beretta. All four men were in there. The L.A. Hustlers saying, come on, just bring me the titles. Let us get out of here. Well, it doesn't work that way. you got to get a Get a pin down or get a submission. But right now, it looked like that's what they were going to do. And right here, they were going to add a little insult to injury when they were going to mimic that move that the Top Guns have won so many matches with. But Joey Bernetti says, oh, he looks up and sees what's coming, and he rolls out of the way just in time. Rolls over to the corner. Again, we want to thank the fine camera work being done for you fans at home that watch each and every Sunday night. Please uh, subscribe it and share it as you watch this action. And then don't forget, Saturday night, April the 6th, the action returns to the Belle Claire Fairgrounds with another all-star card being lined up. Referee Bill Henson shaking his head. Sometimes these referees got to say, what are you putting me into here? When you have four in the top of the business, you got to go in there and fish you now with look at sleeper. He's got the sleeper on him. He's got it clamped on right in the center of the ring. Again, the fans thought this was it. They thought that the Top Guns would once again be defeated. He's got a close, but for Nettie, being able to break that up. But now he needs to get over and get a tag with Brandon Bretta. Both men on the canvas. Joey trying to crawl his way over. Referee is going to start the count. Who's going to be the one to get up for the 10 count? There you see another great fan, Karen, in your right hand upper corner there. She's the one to give you a piece of her mind real quickly. The tag's made. Brandon Beretta comes in. Now it's the Top Guns 
on the attack. Shoulders into the midsection. Ooh, big uppercut. Again, all four men. I believe the referee is just giving them a lot of leeway here in this. The titles are on the line. Whips him off the corner. Oh, and there you see Lucky P. Larson saying, that's it. One, two, but no. Fernetti comes in and breaks that up. Ooh, how close that was. Now all four men down on the canvas. The referee's down, making sure that Beretta's shoulders aren't down still. But now, all four men down. Again, I don't know who the legal man is. So I hope the referee does. Now, we got action outside the ring. Uh-oh. There you see Lucky P. Larson getting up on the ring apron. Now, what's he doing? He's setting that briefcase up. Uh-oh. Here comes, oh, a reversal. And it's the L.A. Hustler that gets ran into that briefcase being held by his manager, Lucky P. Larson. And now the tide has changed. And there you see Brandon Beretta. And there's Kowalski. Big Kowalski, 450 pounds, was trying to interject himself into Big Joe Helms. Cut him off, which is a good thing because if Kowalski would have got in there, there's no telling what would happen to the top guns. You see Big Joe Helms, the silverback, taking Kowalski, fighting him all the way to the back. But in the ring right now, look at this. Brandon Beretta picking up the L.A. Hustler and delivering him on that canvas. There you see Joey Renetti. He's outside on the ring apron. And look at this. There's that finishing move we were talking about. Joey Renetti up on that top rope. Comes off on his target. Count of one, two, three. And there you have the Top Guns become the new SICW Tag Team Champions at the Belclair Fairgrounds. Fans, the crowd went crazy. Wrestling fans, I am here with Lucky P. Larson and the current former tag team champions. But of course, I, who potentially, by the time this episode is over, may be the three-time champions. Pardon me, sir. Lucky. There is no potential about it. The LA Hustlers will very soon be your three-time, three-time, three-time SICW Tag Team Champions. You've got the greatest tag team on God's green earth against the luckiest tag team on God's green earth. They got one win in their 1,237th shot. Congratulations. That is not going to happen again. This time, these two gentlemen leave with their championship belts. Period. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's your main event. Anything to say, sir? No. Anything else you wanted to ask me about? I think that's going to do it. Yeah, yeah, because I thought you were about to ask me something that I don't want to talk about, and if you did, I'd smack you in the head with the briefcase. Good decision on your Ma part. Maybe I wouldn't have, but since you set me up, no. we haven't talked about it yeah, since. We're not going to talk You saw about it that. last week. Herb Simmons set the match. You successfully got Big Joe Helms suspended for the yeah, month of that's April. All that However, in May, May the 4th, it's going to be Big Joe Helms going one-on-one -on -one with your man Kowalski. If Big Joe Helms pick up a victory, immediately following the match, he gets five minutes alone with you. That will never happen. Never happen. Kowalski is 2-0 against that man. And, and I've, got, I've got these men, and, and I've, got, I've got all sorts of weapons in my arsenal. You okay? Shut up! Lucky P. Larson, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, Jason Breed will go one-on-one -on -one with the Uber Destroyer. Don't go anywhere. Back by popular demand. It's the SICW Fan Fest 2, May 17th and 18th in St. Louis. Get your tickets now. Get your tickets now. 
See the stars of professional wrestling from today and yesterday. Hall of Famers and the next generation of superstars. More names to be announced soon. Get your tickets now. SICW.org. That's SICW.org. Huge pop for the Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast, and riding with me is. Oh, you didn't know? Your ass better call somebody. It's me. It's me. It's that M A double T. And hey, we're here. Wrestling fans, you looking for the best in daily lunch specials and great menu food items? Look no further than Layla's Roadhouse, 440 Falling Springs Road in Cahokia Heights, Illinois. That's right, a family sit-down dining and always great specials. Also has the best pizza in the area. Ladies and gentlemen, this matchup set for one fall, 10-minute time limit. Introducing first a company to the ring by the Merchant of Violence, Stephen E. Representing Devastation Incorporated from Germany, 115 kilos, the Uber Destroyer. His opponent from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 245 pounds, Jason Breed. The bell is rung, the action is underway. Your referee is Mr. Bill Henson. This is the first time on All-Star Wrestling that we've seen Jason Breed in action since his devastating leg injury yeah, what happened several to him? months ago. What happened? You happened. Oh, he yeah. has recovered, and now he's got his sights set on a lot of people. He's got his sights set on the Hustlers. He's got his sights set on Devastation Incorporated, who have been running roughshod. This will be I interesting know. because this Uber Destroyer has been sort of the avatar of uh, what? Destruction? All I Steve know e. is that I've never been a big fan of Germany, but this guy, I'll make an exception. I hope he puts Jason Breed right back on the shelf. And I'll give you a little tidbit. Last year, I actually managed the Uber Destroyer in Tennessee, so I know a little bit about this guy. Ah, We've talked on commentary how us here in SICW, all we know is what we've seen so far. They know We know he says he's from Germany. We don't know that. This could I be, do. This could be a mind game. But here's what we know. He's tough as a nail. What, we've, what surprised me, he's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the classic champion, the big Texan. And all we know about him, he moves slow. He's plotting. He's methodical. His claw is deadly. Yep. That's about all we know. And That's really, exactly right. it's there almost it like Stephen E. isn't even using him as a wrestler to win matches. He's using this Uber Destroyer to deliver messages to, to get people. his point across. That's exactly right. He's a mercenary. And I'm telling you, I've got a very keen interest in this match. Jason Breed wants to put my name in his mouth. Let's see what happens. Isn't to Jason your Green. name in his mouth because you put it there? I didn't put anything anywhere except a briefcase on his ankle. Big hip toss, almost a beal from the that Uber was a Destroyer beal. onto Jason Breed. Keep him down. Jason Breed picking up a quick win recently in Belleville, Illinois. He went one-on-one -on -one with Richard Shaw, picked up a victory in about 45 seconds. Yeah, well, the Uber Destroyer is not Richard Shaw, is he? Uh, not that I know of, but what we know is we don't know what uh, Jason Breed's car. Oh, it's the claw. There He's got go. that locked in. He's going to have to Squeeze. get out of there Pop or like that's going to be uh, as over as quickly as it started. Bill Hansen calling for the bell. He almost didn't break it, but he did. As you always say, he broke it by five. That's exactly right. Jason, er, pardon, the Uber Destroyer, we never saw those types of strikes. He was almost uh, doing a little boxing there and very yeah. successfully. 
Jason Breed actually has a heck of an experience in combat sports and boxing, mixed martial well, arts. Isn't serving him too well right now, is nope, it? That clothesline uh, planted him on his shoulders, but only for the two. Jason Breed getting the heck out of there. I hope you're paying close attention. I am paying attention. Good. I always watch the matches. Good. Because I have a feeling the Uber Destroyer is going to put this man out of his misery. Well, we shall see. Normally, I would think the Uber Destroyer would be the underdog against somebody like Jason Breed. But given what we've seen here in recent weeks and months, maybe the Uber Destroyer is to be taken much more seriously and than maybe, a lot of people here are. And maybe, as I said, since I managed this man one time, and Stephen and I do have a good working relationship, maybe uh, I gave him a little advice. Oh, uh, Lord. Heck of a match, and you got to give props to Jason Breed for going toe to toe and not shying away from a challenge I'm not against Jason a Breed. man he knows nothing about. I'm not giving Jason Breed props for anything. Huge splash! But very soon I will give Jason Breed something. Well, that sounds good. Yep. Jason Breed taking it to the destroyer. Irish whip. Big leaping elbow from Breed to the Uber Destroyer. Going for the pinfall. Will he get the Not win? Enough. No. Nope. This Uber Destroyer is very tough. Yes, he very is. Very tough. It's going to take a lot more than that. Look at that. Even fighting from behind on his knees. He still has the wherewithal to throw an uppercut oh, to the, beautiful to the stomach. And there it is. DDT to Breed. I'll even be. I'm guilty myself. I underestimated this Uber Destroyer. You think with the pack of killers that Devastation Incorporated employs, the Uber Destroyer would be on the lower end of that ladder. That's not been the case. Shows how little you know. Thanks. Going toe to toe. Jason Breed, Uber Destroyer, turned into fisticuffs there for a moment. Breed up and over, drop kick, stuns the destroyer. Yeah, you don't want to get into a fist fight with Jason Breed. I'll give him that. And in his time away, he's been lifting weights. He's been lifting heavy weights, so he's a lot stronger than he was when he left, too. Something for you to look forward to. Hey! Oh, wait, oh my look, God! Look. Oh, my God! It's the <laughs> professionals! <laughs> it's the professionals! Yes, it is! We haven't seen them in many, many months! <laughs> it's Mauler McDarby, Sean Santel! The professionals are back! Taking it to Jason Breed! They've been missing in action for many, many months! Stephen E! Devastation Incorporated, the Uber Destroyer. This is not their fight. They are getting out of Dodge. The professionals taking it to Jason Breed. They came in through the back door, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody even saw them coming. They weren't in the locker room. And he nails them. The professionals laying out Jason Breed. They are back with a message. The former two-time tag team champions, Mahler McDarby and Sean Santel. Let me go to ringside and catch a word. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucky, I feel like now, looking back on your commentary, you were warning me. Lucky, you must have had this planned. They snuck in the back door. Sean Santel, Mahler McDarby, your former two-time champs, they're back. How did you pull this off? Welcome home, boys. What's the matter, Dr. Drew? You look a little flummoxed. I believe the words everybody is searching for is, ah! <laughs> <laughs> We're back. We have worn and worn and sat idly by while everybody got way too comfortable on SICW. People have seemed to have forgotten why those tag team titles sit here. We are the measuring stick of tag team wrestling. Big Joe Helms, we bring you into the fold. We put clothes on your back, money in your pocket. We put a gal on your arm. And what did you do after I warned you? And I warned you, and I warned you. 
You went against the family. Jason Breed got in the way. You don't put your hands on the boss. So he paid his dues. Big Joe Helm, you're going to be paying your dues here real soon. Brandon and Joe, you better be sleeping with one eye open. You better be looking over your shoulder because we're coming. We're coming. Dues are being owed. Tell them. And we've warned you all in little ways, and you have nobody to blame but yourselves for resting on your laurels and doing whatever you think you could do while we were away. You have nobody to blame but yourselves, and we're here to claim back what is rightfully ours. You think it's a coincidence, little Joe? Suddenly, look who's back. Ain't happening, little Joe. I'm going to make this real simple. It's time to pay the dues, boys, and with the vig. Fans, the landscape has changed with the arrival of the professionals. Lucky, you pulled it off. I don't know Who how you did Who is the smartest man in wrestling, and why is it Lucky P. Larson Esquire? Uh. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it, Herb Simmons. We got to take a commercial break, folks. When we return, Bobby D in action. Don't go away. The vendors are lining up for FanFest 2. On Saturday, May 18th, we're happy to welcome the Nebraska Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame as one of our newest sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, this matchup set for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing first, from Effingham, Illinois, at 299 pounds, Richard Shaw. There's that self confidence. His opponent is from Belleville, Illinois, at 283 pounds. He is the 2022 and 2023 Bruiser Brody Memorial Battle Royal winner, Bobby D. Referee Nick Ridenauer calls for the bell. It is underway. Belleville's own taking on Effingham, Illinois' own Richard Shaw. You know, you got to wonder how long Richard Shaw is going to have this massive confidence. He is on quite the streak. Fake it till you make it. Yes. That's what I hear you do. I'm still here. And you're still faking it. Now, of course, we saw Bobby D earlier in this hour sort of make his intentions known. He's got... Uh, uh, he's of... whining and he's crying. He lost his belt to Steve, to superstar Steve Fender. So now, superstar Steve goes on and wins yet another belt. And so he whines and complains and now wants a shot at both of them. He's not whining and complaining about anything. He was the rightful Central States champion not once, but twice. And we saw it. He probably still would be the champion if Sean Vincent didn't interfere, didn't attack Bobby D, which led to Steve Fender claiming the Central States title. Not if the so, frog didn't sit in the middle of the road, it wouldn't have gotten run over by the truck. Yes, and if people won matches more often, you'd still have tag belts. But Bobby yeah, D. By the time this show is over, I will. And I believe my chances for the tag team championship have just doubled. Well. We shall see, and that's something you're going to have to work out. What's the hierarchy look like in the Dogtown Underground? What's your priority? Are the professionals going to leapfrog the L.A. Hustlers on your client list? Can they coexist peacefully? Time will tell. It's all one big family. We all get along. The good of one is the good of all. Bobby D looking to lock up a sharpshooter. 
Richard Shaw with nowhere to go. He is tapped out, ladies and gentlemen. Bobby D, he can pin you. He can submit you. But the point remains, he can beat you however he wants to. Bobby D making a run. Superstar Steve Fender. The national championship of the AIWF looking to reclaim the Central States title. Bobby's on a roll, picking up a win here on All-Star Yeah, Wrestling. and when he loses the Battle Royal, he's going to have nothing left. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to take one final commercial yeah. break. When we return, yeah. it's your chance. Lucky, yeah. your main event is next. Three times. The tag titles are on Three the line time. when we return. Three times. I just want to say that was super rude of you to walk away from me. If you're talking to the New York State champion, you're going to have to pay up. Do you take Kale? Dude, goodbye. Whipwreck, Cation, doesn't matter. We'll see what happens, but uh, it looks like we, we, we have a special guest. Get my earplugs on. Looking for Tina, and then you talk about people. Tonight, all right? The Dirty Deeds, they got nothing. Oh, we're gonna have the new Starlet Champion. What's going on? Hi, I am. Okay. You're with Princess, so why not team up? Yeah. <laughs> all right, now just announced by Mr. Jawal Maximal for February. Show is called the Shadow Band, and I was like, that's kind of. Watch you. Hold on. Let me speak. Okay. But today I got a very special guest. We got the great wrestling fans. One of SICW's newest sponsors for FanFest 2 is KC Insurance. For all your insurance needs, look to KC Insurance. Wrestling fans, your all-star wrestling main event set for one fall, TV time remaining. It is for the SICW Tag Team Championships. Introducing first, your challengers, accompanied to the ring by Lucky P. Larson Esquire. From the City of Angels, at a combined weight of 504 pounds, they are the former two-time SICW Tag Team Champions, Rough Shot Lamont Potts, the notorious Bradley Diggs, the L.A. Hustlers. Their opponents from St. Louis, Missouri, at a combined weight of 464 pounds, they are the reigning, defending SICW Tag Team Champions, Brandon Beretta, Joe Vinetti, the Top Guns. Your referee for this title match is Denny Thomas. It looks like all four competitors are ready to go. The bell is rung, ladies and gentlemen. We are underway, and by the time this episode is over, will we have new tag team champions? Will the LA Hustlers reclaim the gold to become three-time SICW tag team champions? Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by the one and only. He's the promoter of this thing. He makes it all possible. Mr. Herb Simmons, thanks for joining me. Dr. Drew, it's always a pleasure. I know he, you do a great job, but uh, I wanted to just uh, come here. This match is a very interesting one. You know, we have the former uh, uh, tag team champions and the L.A. Hustlers against the current champions, but you know, a while back, I had the uh, misfortune of uh, them laying their hands on me, if you remember. and uh, I ended up in the middle of it. I don't try to get involved, but listen, I know Bradley Diggs would have turned me into a pancake, but when he put his hands on yourself, I had to put my body in between y'all. I shouldn't have. I couldn't, I couldn't stop it. But thank God for Cowboy Bob Orton and the Top Guns, who were actually effective in a way I was not. Well, and like I said, uh, I was thankful that the, the ace, Cowboy Bob Orton, was there that night. He was part of the big announcement of the uh, uh, racetrack partnership, uh, the uh, show on June 1st. So I'm glad he was there with us because 
uh, when they put their hands on me and was wanting to, insisting they get the titles back. Well, you know, you can put your hands on uh, just about everybody, but I don't take that too lightly. I'm not a worker. You're not a worker. You're not a wrestler. No. And uh, they're going to pay the price uh, here down the road, I can tell you. Well, this is a heck of a match, and due to the attention that the L.A. Hustlers versus the Top Guns have received here in SICW, I know you've been fielding calls from promoters from the South, from the North, from the West, trying to bring this feud into their company. So shout out to the Top Guns and the L.A. Hustlers for really helping put SICW's name on the map and getting it out there. Not that it isn't already, but this feud has really helped. Oh, right. Well, the L.A. Hustlers is the team that's reckoned with in any promotion they go to. And the uh, Top Guns, you know, graduates of the Ace Wrestling Academy, trained by Cowboy Bob Orton, have already been to Arkansas. They've been to Memphis, and they're on the move, too. So these two teams are going to meet in some promotion uh, locker room somewhere, I can tell you. Good time for a quick plug for the Ace Wrestling Academy. Of course, the Ace making the save. It was... Uh, I can't remember which hustler caught the right hand of the cowboy, but one of them did, and uh, they did not appreciate it. But we have our very own Ace Wrestling Academy. Anybody in the Midwest curious if you have what it takes to maybe step in the ring and be judged and trained by the Hall of Famer, Cowboy Bob Orton, get a hold of us on Facebook and inquire about that. And who knows, because I bring that up, what you see right now is our tag team champions are graduates of the Ace Wrestling Academy. So you don't know who might be out there listening and watching now that you get trained, you come join us, you might be in the ring holding gold within two or three years. Not everybody is as talented as the top guns are, but you know, you never know. They're a great example of what can happen if you work hard, you listen to your trainers. Well, right now the top guns are on Brandon Beretta really going to work he's showing some of that what he was taught in the ace academy and drew you know we want to talk about what is in store for sicw down the road we we you know we're going to be oh look at that big kick by brandon beretta he gets better every single time that big shoulder tackle off the rope. That's what's important with these newer students. You can't just graduate and call it a day. They continue to learn and get better everywhere they go, learning new double-team maneuvers like that. I'm telling you, it's just back and forth. These four men are just top, top, top of the business. And, of course, when you have the likes of a Lucky P. Larson on the outside, you know, you sit here week after week with him because he has a contract to do so. Yep. And between you and I, I'm waiting for that contract to come up for renewal so I can expire it. Uh, well, it would save me money on Excedrin and all sorts of headache pills, so we'll see. Well, right now, jo Joey Vernetti's in that wrong corner, and the L.A. Hustlers taking advantage of it. Rough shot. Potts got the knee right in the face of Vernetti. Brandon Beretta trying to will his partner back into their own neighborhood so he can get in there and try to turn the tides. Well, the one person I wouldn't want to be in this match is referee Denny Thomas. He's got his work cut out for him. We recently saw an old school Australian rules tag team match wrestling at the chase throwback. Oh, Vinetti going for the pinfall, pardon me. The, hustler, uh, the guns almost retaining the title, but rough shot Potts got out of that one. Well, you know, Drew, you was talking about the Australian tag team match. That is the throwback to the days of wrestling at the chase, and that's what SICW is all about. And that's why we are tied up with the uh, uh, World Trade uh, Technology at the raceway where we're going to be part of June 1st. We can't oh, wait for that. Oh, look at that. Vinetti catches the leaping pots, slams him in the center of the ring, going for the pin. No, Bradley Diggs. He reached in, pulled Denny Thomas. Oh, and look at that. Potts used that momentary distraction. I think he just raked Vinetti right in the eyes. Joe Vinetti doesn't know where he is. I bet Vinetti would have had a three count there. Man, listen to this studio audience. The LA Hustlers certainly know where they stand amongst the SICW faithful. Well, Drew, and that's just, you know, you hear the studio audience, and now's the time to just, we thank our fans. I mean, at the Belclair Fairgrounds, the fans are hot. Look at this. Here comes yeah, Speaking Brandon. of hot, hot tag to Brandon Beretta. He's a man on fire. Sending Potts to the mat. Two clotheslines. Drop kick. Sending Potts into the corner. 
I guarantee you, fans, you won't see action like this anywhere, only at SICW. Intelligently done. Brandon Beretta knew he couldn't get the pinfall in the corner. He pulled Potts to the center of the ring, but that gave him enough time to recover, to kick out. He just pulled Denny out of the ring again. How much of this is Denny going to take? I, mean, I know it's a title match. We try to have a little bit of leeway, but there has to still be rules. Exactly. That's why I said I hate to be him. Bradley Diggs, he can't help himself. Tripping up Brandon Beretta. Potts going after Vanetti. This thing's breaking down into, as Larry Matisik used to say, an all-out Donnybrook. All-out Donnybrook. All four men on the outside. They are brawling, Drew. Joe Vanetti paired up with rough shot Potts. Brandon Beretta on the opposite side of the ring with the notorious Diggs. They're going to have to get back in the ring. If the LA Hustlers want to try to reclaim the titles, you can't do it on the outside. Joey Vanetti. Referee Denny Thomas up to the count of nine. Make it ten. There you go. That's Pulse a ten count. Bell. Ladies and gentlemen, they couldn't turn it back into a match. This is too much of a fight. Too many emotions at stake. Man, they're they're, tearing, right the, next to they're us. tearing the studio up here. Ladies and gentlemen, technically, it's a double count out. The top guns are retaining your champ, uh, championships. They're still our champs. The fight is not over. But ladies and gentlemen, this episode is over. We are out of time for Lucky P. Larson Esquire. For Herb Simmons, I'm Drew Abenhaus. The match has turned into all-out chaos. The point is the Top Guns are still our tag champs. As we say good night to you wrestling fans, we'll see you right here next week on SICW All-Star Wrestling. They're still going, but we got to get out of here. Have a good night, everybody.